I have spoken at length about how to learn the modes on this channel. You can check those videos out anytime you want. But if you really want to learn how to use the modes, I got you. Friends and neighbors, welcome back to The Brownstone. My name is Rich Brown. Thank you for joining me once again. Today, I am answering a question, a question that I get quite a lot, especially over the last couple of weeks, uh, because uh, you know I've set up a couple of videos on this channel talking about the modes and how to learn them and where to put your fingers and all that business. Um, I've done a few videos on the modes, but I haven't really talked about how to use them in a musical setting. So I'm going to do that today. And what I want to do is just play, well, just sort of demonstrate how the modes really work and prove that you're just playing the same scale, just in different positions on the neck. And you kind of can't go wrong, especially if you recognize where the chord tones of your initial uh, key, let's say we play in G major. If you recognize where the chord tones are going to be every time you switch to a new mode, you're golden. You can't do any wrong. You really can't. So every time I switch from one position to the next, here's like Dorian, here's sort of Phrygian Lydian, which I see as the same thing. Here I move up to Mixolydian. Here is uh, Aeolian. I got it right this time. And Locrian. Like every time I move to a new position, I know, or at least I can hear, where the chord tones um, or where the scale resolves, right? So that's what I want to talk about today. And I'm just going to start by playing a simple groove and then playing the mode. That's it. So I'm going to play like, I don't know, some sort of bass line in G major. And then what I want to do is I'm just going to play each mode from the top to the bottom. So descending on each mode. That's just going to give you a sense of the sound of the mode and how it sounds against the harmony. And uh, spoiler alert, it all sounds the same, but that's the point. You're able to access all the notes of your initial harmony, the key of G major in this particular case. You're playing the same notes, but you're moving to new positions. Everyone talks about how to learn the entire fingerboard, or at least see the entire fingerboard when you're playing on a particular tune. The modes, for me, that's the perfect way to do that. That's the perfect way to understand where everything is going to be in one key, so that no matter where I am on the neck, I know what's available to me. That's the point. So what I'm going to do is maybe I'll just take this at a nice slow tempo. I'll set up like a nice little groove for myself. <laughs> Right? This just gives you a sense of the sound, so you can really hear that I'm playing the major. Not the dominant, not the minor. You get that sense of the harmony. So you see what I did there? That fill was just playing descending on the Dorian scale. So that's all I'm going to do on each mode. Just play descending. Just to give me the sound and understand where I am in the scale and also understand how each mode resolves in, uh, over the original harmony, G major. So you just heard the Dorian scale. The next mode is going to be the Phrygian mode, which I will start, or which starts on the, the note B at the seventh fret of the E string. And 
that's the pattern descending. So those are the notes that I'm going to play. <laughs> That's the mode. So when I play my groove again, that was Phrygian. Now I'll do, well, Here's the thing with the Lydian and the Phrygian, they're in the same position, right? If I play the Phrygian mode, oops. And then I play the Lydian mode. I'm kind of in the same position. So I see those two modes as one shape. Um, so it doesn't make a whole lot of sense to go, you know, to demonstrate the Phrygian and then the Lydian because I see them as the same thing. So what I'll do is I'll skip the Lydian and I'll move on to the Mixolydian. So when I play the Mixolydian mode, right? That's from the note D on the E string, at the 10th fret of the E string. So then I'll play my groove. Hear that? Like, there's, there's really no change in the harmony. I see a different shape every time I move uh, to a different mode, but I'm playing the same scale, just moving the scale to a different position. The notes are all the same. And that's the beauty of being able to play the modes and access them anywhere on the neck, is that you know you can't go wrong because you're playing the same scale tones. It's all the same stuff. So now when I do the same thing and move down to the Aeolian scale, starting on the E, 12th fret of the E string, over that G major, <laughs> That was E Aeolian. And then I end on the G, just to resolve it. So that's the deal. And then I can do the same thing with the final mode, the seventh mode, which is, uh, what is that? F sharp Locrian, right? So that's a minor scale where the second note and the fifth note is flat. If I do that, that's F sharp at the 14th fret of the E string, and I play a minor scale where the second note, minor third, fourth, the fifth note is flat. There's my minor sixth, minor seventh, and then I'm at G, just like that. And then I can ex extend that to uh, the G string as well. So my full shape, if I'm thinking of my four fret span and what fingers I'm using on that four fret span, for that F sharp Locrian scale, the Locrian scale is one, two, four, one, two, four, one, three, four, one, three, four. So I'll do that. I'll set up my groove. And then I'll play my scale. And that's the deal. You can hear how it all sounds very consonant, very inside. I'm playing seven different scales, but it's really just one scale, starting from a different position. That's the beauty of the whole thing about the modes. You're accessing the harmony from literally anywhere on the neck. Isn't that great? So all I did there was run the scale. That's pretty much it. And I went through each of the modes descending on all of them so that you could hear them against my G major harmony. 
and you can very easily hear that it all makes sense. So once you get a sense of the scale, what it looks like, what it sounds like, what it feels like under the fingers, then you can start to create your own patterns. Use some different sequential patterns, use your triads, your chord tones, your different sort of scale fragments to put together lines that are unique to the shape that you're working with. Because this is the beauty of each of these modes. Even though you're playing the same scale, the same notes all the way through, I feel like each mode has a certain sort of melodic characteristic associated with it that you can totally take advantage of. For instance, if I play, let's say, B Phrygian, so that's the third mode of G major, right? There's a cool thing that I can take advantage of right off the top, where I have this minor second going from B to C, which is like a very common sort of... Uh, jazz or bebop phrase that starts with like um, a minor second and then going through with like a major arpeggio starting from the second note. So in this case I'm playing the B and then I'm going into a C major arpeggio. So if I play that groove again, that's just working with the Phrygian scale, starting from the third note, which gives me the third mode. And it all sounds beautiful. Each one of the modes has its own sort of characteristic that you can take advantage of. The Dorian scale has all these notes that are parallel to each other. Like all the notes on the, uh, the E, sorry, all the notes on the A, the D, and the G string, um, playing on the 5th fret, 7th fret, and ninth fret, all of those notes work. So you can create patterns, if I play that groove again, that sounds great. And that's just recognizing that there's this feature in the Dorian scale that allows me to create this different pattern unique to that shape. Every mode has its own melodic characteristic. And once you see the shape and recognize where those patterns are, then your, your playing can like vary and you don't have to necessarily play the same stuff over and over again because now you have all these different access points to create some new shapes. I hope that makes sense. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, friends and neighbors, uh, have fun with this. Have fun with this. I do see it as an exercise where you can really just examine one mode for like an hour and just sort of get into the, the, the shape itself and then recognize the patterns within that shape unique to that particular mode. Once you start to examine that a little bit more, then you know where you are. Every time you move to a new position, starting with your initial harmony. Every time you move to a new position, there are different things that you can access. And realizing that will open up your playing in a multitude of ways. Have fun with that. Friends and neighbors, do me a favor. If you see some value in this lesson, you know what to do. Like, share, subscribe, donate, uh, hit the notification bell, all that stuff. All that stuff will be listed in the description box below. And it is all greatly appreciated. And I thank you very much for tuning in and joining me here in the Brownstone today. And I cannot wait to see you in the next video.